Hello everybody, welcome to my lab. Today I have on my bench uh, Raymarine S2G uh, AST Autopilot computer and it has a small problem. So now I'm gonna show you what is that I'm usually doing uh, from start to end uh, fixing marine electronics. Now, uh, beside the uh, auto computer, you will uh, need uh, the router reference unit. You will need uh, his own flux gate, the Raymarine flux gate, because you have to have them uh, connected on the input. Then you will need a display, that is his display. And right now, at the actuator output, I have connected only a 12 volt uh, incandescent uh, bulb, but then the power part will be tested on board or on a power actuator on a real actuator. Now, before even starting to do anything to the unit, since the owners all they know to say it's it's not working, it's not working, it's not working. So the first thing you have to do a test to see the rudder reference unit if it is working or not. The rudder reference unit has a small point here, an indent and another one on the other side. When the two indents match, in theory, you should be on the center, uh, centered on the on the router on the display. Right now, is not centered, but uh, this might be because on the on board they've done uh, the calibration process and is not aligned uh, properly. Well, not uh, gonna mess with that for now. Then you'll have the compass and you have to do them a couple of turns to see if the readings of the autopilot are, are going ok right now I'm seeing that it is seeing the compass over there but it's not responding it's not doing the 360 degrees uh, while I'm turning it it stays only on one part like 30, 40, 50 degrees. So that gives us a problem on the compass part of the autopilot of the flux gate. Everything is connected well. I'm going left, so it should go. Diminishing and uh, 34 degrees is the maximum that it shows. So right now we know that there is a problem on the compass and we start with the tests. We put the rudder on the center, the transducer of the autopilot approximately, auto and then going left and it's not saying anything, it's not doing anything on the output. Ah, right now it's going. Okay, on the left side is going, on the right. On the right is not doing anything. Yeah, when you go left, it's going left. Now we'll put in auto, start moving the rudder. One side is not doing anything. On the other side, they start moving the actuator. Okay, so that's the second problem. Now I see that the compass is fluctuating. Really nasty. We'll have a look on that also. But it's really strange that before I was not reading the compass. It's not the interferences uh, here in the lab because uh, I do have. Uh, it's not the interferences uh, here on the lab because I've uh, tested uh, pilots like this, and they're still going to do the whole uh, round. Sometimes it's going, sometimes it's not going. We'll uh, have a look inside on what's going on on the compass side also. <coughs> The lab is not always uh, this messy. I'm trying to, to keep them uh, a little bit uh, organized, everything uh, clean. But these days, 
I'm going on board the boats to troubleshoot the problems and fix what can be fixed on board and then I'm coming back to the lab so I have little of no time to, to reorganize everything and besides that I'm in the process of moving everything on board the boat and start having the lab on board now I'm opening up, opening up the unit if I can open her up ok and first I'll have a go on watching what's going on inside if I can see th something with the bare eye it's an S2 so it's missing all the power part uh, I'll show you later the difference before between the S2 and the S3 now we're going on the top of the board we have the measuring points to see the tension VADC 695 it's almost ok VIN plus 12 volt it's 24 it's ok 5 volt 5 volt it's ok, 3 volt 3.2 it's ok V12 12.9 it's ok V power 12.9 it's ok so the power it is ok the processor it's all those uh, chips from neck inside these autopilots are getting quite warm um, to the touch I have no idea why the power relay is ok so now we'll have to see what's going on on the on the compass first of all if all the signals are ok I'll start the oscilloscope I'm using a Regal uh, DS uh, DS1054 that has four uh, traces it's common used between between guys I don't need uh, a lot of precision I don't need the calibrated instruments I only using the oscilloscope to see the waveforms and see where the signal is stopping or it's not stopping and uh, practi uh, practi practically I'm using it as uh, as an expensive multimeter most of the times now I'm watching what's going on with the compass signal I've done a video on the other channel uh, on how okay now I'm triggering on what's going on with this signal of the compass you have, I don't know if it is visible from there but I'm not um, gonna move right now the camera there is another video on the Electronic Marine Italian channel where I'm explaining what's going on here and how to measure it and uh, what are the flux gate uh, <coughs> For now it seems to be ok, so it could be only a... a small problem. Now let's just see what's the problem with the power part, why is not coming any kind of signal when it's going to one side. Now I'm gonna measure directly on the MOSFETs to see what's going on there are a couple of test points uh, on the board but I never remember which one of them are so the fastest way is just to measure it on the MOSFETs complaining about the, the rudder sensor now just a quick and dirty look on the oscilloscope if I'm 
pressing auto, auto, going left, 20 degrees, it's sending the signal in the right direction. We go auto again and we go right and we have no signal on the output. Uh, this is a normal H bridge that commands uh, a motor and uh, no, the power transistors uh, that are the MOSFETs on the final part uh, they almost never uh, break down or burn or something like this because uh, you have a protection one of those resistors I don't remember which one maybe this one uh, it's uh, doing the current reading it's acting as a shunt and that stops from burning the final MOSFETs the problem is almost uh, always inside the logic part that commands the, that uh, H bridge now I'll have a look with the oscilloscope uh, following the signal uh, where it's going and uh, see what might be now, the Now the one in the bottom it's an S2 the one on the top it's an S3 uh, you notice that on the S2 they are missing a couple of parts uh, inside that are present on the S3 on the S3 we have uh, the part that does 24 to 12 volt uh, conversion there is a DC to DC converter and uh, when it's power up uh, on 12 volt uh, you have uh, this MOSFET that uh, on uh, the other one uh, is not present right over here and it has a jumper uh, on the S3 that MOSFET when the, it's going on 12 volt uh, it uh, conducts so it bypasses all the the switching DC to DC part so that's the only difference between the S2 and the S3 uh, besides that on the S3 uh, there's another difference this one has the IRF48N uh, transistors MOSFETs this one should have an uh, 3025 or something like this uh, as uh, power MOSFETs on the final and maybe inside uh, the firmware uh, he knows that uh, it uh, can hold up a bigger current on the actuator so only switching the, the final power parts on the S2 you cannot uh, have them command a bigger actuator and all that was uh, even before to start the welder I'm using a really cheap and nice uh, ACO FX888 uh, maybe I don't know, I'm not reading the exact model right now I'm looking for a piece of wire that I need for my ground <coughs> that was even before starting the welder on the zero volt uh, a piece of wire that is the general ground because inside the instrument you have more than one ground you have the analogic ground that is uh, filtered really well filtered I don't know if you can see what you can see I'm not gonna stay and do the videos like uh, Louisa Rosman does uh, I don't have the time and I'm not willing to spend the money on the gear my channel we don't even know how it's gonna go this one now <clears throat> I'm searching for the collectors of one of the H bridge command transistors okay you have uh, two small uh, power devices it's on the left it's on the left that commands the MOSFET to see if the signal is present and one side you have it on the other you don't one commands the the high MOSFET one commands the low MOSFET <coughs> hmm. 
so we don't have any there. Now we have the four uh, oscilloscope probes and all the four channels uh, on. I don't know if I managed to. Maybe you can see it if I take this one down. And this one, when I'm uh, pressing auto to go in autopilot, watch what's happened with the top channel, with the violet one. It's going too high. That means that uh, that transistor is going, that MOSFET is going to conduction. So if you go left, it's using that one, so there is no problem. But if you go right, it's trying to use, but it cannot uh, cannot use it because it's blocked. Also, the the clear blue one, it's uh, still because uh, the protection. It says to keep it low, so that way it will not burn the the MOSFETs. So the problem, it's on the violet one. Now I'll go start uh, investigating on the board to see what's going on. Now we'll just give the power. We go in autopilot, it's in auto right and is commanding the motor. Autopilot left, it was already working, now it's working. Uh, the right also and that is the repair of the day the interesting repair of the day this one made me really mad uh, the problem uh, I think it went from this op amp that sends the signal uh, through an uh, HC04 uh, uh, buffer and then you have the transistors that are commanding the power MOSFETs uh, I even went to the hassle to desolder one of the MOSFETs and I did a really crappy job resolder everything but I am really really exhausted uh, and that uh, make, uh, made uh, damage on the board and then uh, I already released this magic smoke, the magic smoke from <laughs> twice from uh, one of the transistors but uh, <laughs> now it's fixed I'll take it on board my boat and I'll test it uh, for good and after a couple of days uh, if everything's okay it will go back to the client